Hi, Tracy Spicer here. As a journalist, I'm fascinated by human behaviour, the motivators and their outcomes. And ever since the start of the pandemic, I've been wondering about how people's attitudes and behaviours have been changing with regards in particular to retirement planning and superannuation. Today, we're joined by Eva Shearlick. Now, she's the CEO of the Australian Institute of Superannuation Trustees. Hi, Eva. Hello, Tracy. Nice to be with you. And you, what changes have you seen in consumer attitudes and behaviour since the start of the pandemic? Yeah, COVID-19 COVID has certainly had a huge impact, obviously. So, um, you know, there was the, there's obviously, there's the health, health impacts and, and the anxiety that comes with that. And then at the same time, you know, the immediate response in, in world markets with, you know, um, with markets falling right around the world and the anxiety that that brings with it. And that's obviously, um, it, there's been a bumpy road for the last few months um, and, and it's made people very anxious. We we did see just like we did during the GFC back in 2008, 2009, um, some members, particularly those I guess that are a bit closer to retirement, uh, making changes to um, you know to their asset allocation and choosing choosing a slightly uh, less risky option and moving moving out of maybe what they were in the growth option perhaps uh, to a less risky um, category like like cash. Um, we saw that during the GFC too. It's a it's a difficult thing um, because I understand people's anxiety, by, but by the same token, when the markets are at the bottom, uh, you're locking in that loss. And then when you if you decide that you want to sort of buy back into the market, uh, unfortunately, you you kind of locked in that loss and then buying back in at a higher price. So we've seen now, um, I think, as super funds have started to release what their end of financial year figures are, actually. They're coming in around sort of uh, zero or one percent um, returns, rather than actually the significant losses that you know we we saw right at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, so while I understand that some people may have made some changes to their asset allocations, it probably might have been a bit wiser to stay where you were because the markets have recovered pretty well. Um, so that's one of the changes that we've seen in behaviour. The other is. Uh, I think increased engagement overall um, with superannuation, you know, one, because of, you know, it's, it's very hard to avoid uh, the media coverage about what's happening in the markets, but also the government's early release of superannuation. Um, um, you know, initiative that, that has seen, you know, two and a half more, close to three million, I think, uh, Australians access that scheme too. So, so it's, it's seen uh, increased engagement from, from that perspective. This is fascinating because it's another reminder, isn't it, that we are humans, we are driven by emotion, we're not necessarily driven by logic in this respect. Yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly right. And, you know, you can't blame people for, for panicking. I mean, a, a global pandemic like this, you know, most of us have never lived through, through before um, and the uncertainty uh, impacts everybody. There's been some commentary recently around the fact that people withdrawing their super early has now exceeded $30 billion in total. Would you characterise this as a run on superannuation or is it too early or too dramatic to say that? Um, so $30 billion represents about, you know, represents, uh, uh, so we've got a $3 trillion industry. So... <laughs> 30 billion sounds like a big number, but uh, you know, three trillion is a much, much bigger number. Uh, so, in terms of the impact on 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 the funds, it's uh, it's not seen at all as a as a run. Um, what's happened, obviously, is that those those industries that have been affected most by um, you know people reduce, being losing their jobs or having their hours reduced, um, the industry funds that service um, those, those members have had a bigger impact in, in terms of the number of uh, applications for early release. Um, it is, however, a staggering number of people who, who feel so, um, so anxious and so uncertain about their financial well-being and, and their future that they have made the decision to, you know, take money out of their future retirement savings pot. And that 
probably concerns me more than, than anything else because once you do that, it's, it's actually very difficult to then rebuild um, that wealth in, in your superannuation uh, account. But Are any of the funds offering discounted fees or anything innovative to members to help get them through this difficult time? Um, so certainly the, the focus has been on trying to make sure that their systems were ready to, you know, to provide early release um, to, to super um, in a very quick turnaround. So the, the regulator had set sort of a, um, a suggestion of, you know, making sure that the claims were, were, um, were processed within five days. So the, the focus has been um, on, on that side. Um, super funds are not used to giving out, you know, sort of money like an ATM to members. They're, they're not set up that way. They, you know, they take the money and keep it for, for a very, very long time until, until people um, retire. Um, so they've had to make a lot of internal changes to their systems in order to be able to have the, the cash available to, to provide to members. Um, we're, you know, obviously looking at what other alternatives that there might be to, to help people to, to, um, to bridge that gap. Um, for their retirement savings in the future if they've taken that money out. Um, one of the things that, that super funds do have to consider though is the members in as part of the fund who have not chosen to take money out and the equity for, for those members if there are uh, fee discounts and, and the like. But having said that, everything's on the table obviously in terms of how, how super funds can, can look after their members. So there could be some kind of incentives in the short term offered by superannuation funds in order to, I guess, stem the flow of people taking their money out. Yeah, well, we're, we're looking to see whether the government actually will introduce, um, you know, some sort of incentive for people to, to top up their super funds again. So uh, we know that some people have taken the money out just in case. You know, if if in in the long run it turns out that you know they haven't needed that money to to you know help support them through through the crisis to make it easy for them to potentially recontribute that money, um, but obviously there's a lot of people who are in severe financial hardship as a result of this pandemic, and because of that, um, you know, not everyone's going to be in a position to 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 be able to afford to to top up. And so for that, we are really hoping that the government will stick to its plan to increase the uh, superannuation guarantee contributions over the next few years up to 12% because that will help, um, but also maybe to allow um, some special provisions, particularly for the low income earners who've really suffered by taking this money out of their account and in some cases close their account completely, um, you know, to allow them over the next few years to, to top that up if they get a chance to do so. What's your one message to someone watching this interview and feeling anxious, looking at history, at global recessions and depressions in the past and worried about what the markets might do in the next few years? Oh, yeah. Uh, look, I, I can't give financial advice, Tracy, as you know, um, and certainly past performance is no indicator of future performance. However, you know, the research does point out over, you know, over hundreds of years that, you know, market cycles do, do go up and down and investors can expect to have uh, negative return years, you know, every um, once every seven to 10 years. So um, markets do correct. We've seen it over the last few few um, months. There is still obviously um, a lot of uncertainty, but for people to have faith, particularly with superannuation as an investment, because uh, it is a long-term investment. It is, it, it's not something that we need to worry about sort of on a daily basis. Um, you know, put your money, um, in a good fund, let the trustees make the decisions on behalf of, of you in your best interests and, and feel comfort in the fact that, um, you know, that they're, that they're really looking after the members' best interests in the long term. And, you know, the, even, you know, the, the, the average performance over the long term is still a year-on-year -year return of, you know, 5 to 7% in most of those funds, which is a good outcome. That certainly is. Eva Shearling, thank you so much for your time. Pleasure, Tracy.